This is a CBC Podcast. Want a weekly roundup of the best CBC Radio programming? Subscribe to the CBC Radio 1 newsletter. Get a digest of the week's top stories. Read in-depth articles. Listen to interviews and documentaries. And get the lowdown on upcoming stories from CBC Radio 1 that you need to hear. To subscribe, go to cbc.ca slash radio and look for the subscribe button. The CBC Radio 1 newsletter. Be informed. How are you? Which is I love you. Keep going. Dying today for Don't Touch. This is First Words, an Indigenous language podcast by Unreserve. Yat e, which is a greeting. Miigwech, which means thank you. Kwepsi dewen, ntliwis pigudwi aji plagen, nagan dujeo negutkok, ubraki kok. Nujin takpnil, naga wulag, kmil ania, bulustuwi lintuaganoa. Hi, everyone. My name is Jeremy Dutcher. I come from Tobik First Nation in uh, Wolostok Territory, and uh, I'm a song carrier and a singer. So last year, I released this record, my first record, called Wolostui Lintuaganawa. And what that means is, well, I'll break it down for you. So Wolostok is this river in the east coast of Canada, and Wolostok means the beautiful and bountiful river. So the suffix on that word is iig. So wulustowiig, the people of that beautiful river. And the second word in the album title is lintuwaganawa. I'll break that word down for you too. So lintu is to sing. Lintuwagan is a song. Lintuwaganawa is songs. So it's the songs of the people of the beautiful river. And I get to go around now and, and share these songs with, uh, with not just my nation, but indigenous peoples from coast to coast and even non-indigenous people too. So it's been a very beautiful experience to get to go and to share these like traditional songs in kind of a new way. So about five years ago, an elder of mine named Maggie Paul from Sidansisk First Nation, she told me about this really beautiful archive that existed, this collection of our really old traditional songs from 110 years ago that existed at the museum. So she said, you know, if you really want to know a thing or two about the old songs, you've got to go to the museum. You can't stay around here. And so that's what I did. I hopped on a train and uh, and went to Ottawa and spent a couple weeks there working at the archives and, and, and heard the most beautiful recordings. There's no there's nothing that could have prepared me for, for the kinds of things I sat down and heard. <laughs> It was so beautiful. And it wasn't just, you know, it's not just the songs either. On these recordings, they're telling stories. You can hear them laughing and dancing. Like, it's a real snapshot of of life in that moment. And so for me, I wanted to translate that beauty to people today and show them how passionate I was about this archive and, and how I wanted to bring it forward for people in the hopes that they might see that beauty too. So when I first sort of came into touch with Wolustigwe, it was from a very, very young age. Um, my grandmother and my mother would speak all the time. My aunt's a language teacher. And so it was always around the home. And I, and I really do feel like with that, with that understanding, comes a real sense of responsibility to go and share that. Because not everybody had that opportunity to be around the language and to get to hear it in their ears. And so even though, you know, we didn't speak a whole lot, we knew the commands, you know, hey, boy, get that, or, you know, stop doing that, or you better behave, or, you know, these kind of things. But it wasn't actually until university that I really started to sit down and, and grapple with the work that it's going to take to ensure that I'm fluent in my language and can write it and can read it and do all that. And it was actually during, because I was, I was studying as a classical musician, and uh, when you go and do the opera degree, you need to study language. 
you need to go and you need to take German uh, and Italian and French and all these like languages because that's what the operas are written in, you know. So you need to have, understand it very well. But I remember it was I was cramming for a German test and it was it was really really tough trying to get all the conjugations right and all this kind of stuff. I was spending so much time on this language and then I realized German's going to be fine. There's a whole country. There's actually a couple countries of people that speak this language. It's going to be okay. Coming to understand the urgency behind our language. You know, we have less than a hundred fluent speakers left. So that if we don't really engage the young people with what it's going to take to save it, we could lose it within the next generation. And what does it mean when we lose a language? We're not just losing words, right? We're losing an entire worldview, a way of relating to each other, a way of seeing the world, and a way of being in relationship with it. So for me, it was in that moment that I said, I'm dedicated to this. This is what I'm going to spend my life doing. And um, so far, so good. I think a lot of people get down about like, oh, I don't know my language. Sure you do. You know a couple words. You know, you know how to say thank you. You know how to greet somebody. And this is enough because that's where it starts. And so I think I want to encourage as many people as possible to to know that they carry the language within them. And I think it, it's it's always been there. We just need to get out of our way, you know, with all these messages that we tell ourselves that, oh, you know, I don't speak like that person or like I'm not good like that person. No. Everyone is on their own individual language journey. And um, it helps us all to lift each other up in, in doing that language work. Hi, everyone. My name is Jeremy Dutcher. And today's Wollastook word of the day is Wollewin. And that means thank you. A good one to know, I think. And your Wollastook phrase of the day is Dunagok Alugil. And this means how are you doing? For more CBC Podcasts, go to cbc.ca slash podcasts.